Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, David's Kitchen. I'm David, and uh, today we're going to be making turkey pepper pasta. $6 in ingredients for 10 people. Looking at a kielbasa uh, sausage that I picked up for a dollar. And normally this would cost $3, but I, I'm an aggressive shopper, so. I got that for a dollar. You can replace that with link sausage if you want. Uh, turkey, ground turkey, wow. Genio, really good brand. $3 off, normally $5.99. So I got it for a dollar ninety. So there's $3. That's all I spent on all this protein. $3. Is that amazing? I mean, that alone makes me, uh, yeah. This, that's a lot of protein we're going to be putting in this sauce. And one thing I like about a, a turkey bolognese sauce is, uh, number one, I'm not dealing with, with pork. And uh, number two, I really uh, it, I like the meatiness. I was going to call this the meaty pepper pasta dish. You could put a whole lamb in there, yeah. Any meaty uh, thing you want to put in there. But I went with turkey pepper pasta. Okay. Trump definitely fired another cabinet member, and the Dow dropped 700 points today, folks. Wow. When he announced Chinese tariffs. Donald Trump is mismanaging our country something fierce. You're going to make Easter dinner for, for 30 people for $10. I, I don't know. That's pretty... <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. You're doing 33 cents a piece. You're buying a two-week-old lamb for $3. You're an even better shopper than I am, expired food chef. I don't know about a two-week-old lamb, though. Lamb could go bad. I hope you don't get anyone sick. Well, I know he exempted the EU from tariffs. It's, he's exempted Canada and Mexico, but that's not winning any awards around the world because the big economies, like China, are not real happy with Mr. Trump. Boy, is he out to lunch or what? Hey, I'm going to fix myself a really nice big cup of coffee here. I just brewed it in my drip coffee maker. I'll show it to you. I like this drip coffee maker. It's uh, it it puts everything in a thermos, and it stays warm if you're serving a lot of people. You know, I'm just pouring it right in there. I want to top it off. Got to have good coffee, I'll tell you. And I filter the water going in there. So I got that Hamilton Beach coffee maker for sixteen dollars on sale at Sears. It was like, wow, they were having a sale before they were closing the store or something. Hey, so here we are. I'm going to uh, chop up some onions to get started. And I'm gonna start cooking up that meat. Oh, but I needed a pickup of some uh, coffee, I'll tell you. Uh, well, you can switch to whatever you want. Hot cocoa is a little too rich in sugar if you want diabetes. Yeah, go for it, Dr. Meow. All right, so there's the guy that washes his cat. We are going to take and look at the breadboard here from a sink perspective today. All right. I'm going to turn the pan on level three in the back and just kind of cut into this onion here. I just flip the bottom so you can grab it and then pull from there. When, it, when you're in a perfect world, you're uh, cooking with an organic onion. And I'm living in a perfect world, so. I bought a big bag of organic onions for a song, so this costs no more than 20 cents for this onion. And uh, I got some organic celery today on sale for uh, amazingly, a dollar twenty-nine a pound, and I picked up a couple stocks here, which is no more than twenty cents. I'm going to rinse those stocks off, even though they are organic, and I'll be cutting those up to go in the dish. Celery adds a little salt in your dinner. Yes, he's chosen John Bolton, the hawkish pro-war figure in history that seems to want to have a. A war with everybody in the world. 
So, yeah. Apparently, Donald Trump doesn't know how to make decisions. That's pretty much obvious. He doesn't make credible decisions, and he doesn't come off as being credible. And that is part of the problem. Lack of credibility. Me, I'm just cooking here. You know, so the bar is set pretty low right now. I don't have to meet the absolute perfection that everyone's seeking in a presidential candidate. And as you know, nobody's perfect, so. You get expired eggs for 25 cents a dozen? Yeah, well, good luck. You know, I just hope nobody gets sick there, expired food chef. <laughs> you really should do a YouTube show. People would love it. Hey, thank you. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna rinse these, uh, these mushrooms off as well. I figure three mushrooms is no more than maybe 30 cents. I'm gonna put everything right now at about, well, I got these two green peppers for two for a dollar. So with this and this little yellow pepper here, or orange pepper, I'm gonna put all the vegetables at $2. So I'm at five bucks. I'm gonna to have to readjust the price here. Yeah, I knew I was I was stretching it with six dollars. Hang on, my mistake. Yeah, I was hoping for six dollars, but it's gonna I'm gonna to have to bump this up to seven, just to accommodate some of you who are buying some extra special meat like I. Uh, this I picked up non-GMO. Gorilla makes non-GMO now. Elbows I got that for a dollar. And between these two, three, three cans of uh, old tomato soup that I have, which I'm going to use, healthy recipe. This is eight years old, this can of tomato soup. It expires in 2010. Yeah, I just, I got to eat this up. And I, I'm a little concerned about the, uh, the lining, you know, getting BPA in my system. So. I have a 12 foot ceiling at the top, I guess. Hey, uh, th this tomato paste, I'm going to show you how to turn it into sauce. I've done that before. This only costs 33 cents. And I got these for 50 cents at the dollar store. Diced Hunt's Tomatoes Organic Petite. Isn't that amazing? For 50 cents a can. And I've got another can if I need to spill off into that for more sauce. But I'm gonna expand the sauce out by taking uh, this little can and mixing it with water. And I'll show you how I do that in a little bit. Okay. Let's start cutting the onion. I've got that pan on level three, so it's pretty hot. I don't want to cut the uh, the cable to the, uh, the camera. That wouldn't work very well. Because I'm left-handed, I'm trying to get the right angle. It's kind of hard. Make sure you use a sharp knife and keep your fingers away from it. Otherwise, you'll be uh, contaminating your entire meal and everything will be thrown out. Yeah, that wouldn't be very good. I'm going for a nice tight mix because I want to make this meat sauce nice and, uh, and kind of smooth because I want it to go, go very nicely with the pasta, the elbow macaroni. So I'm going to take all of that and put it on virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I happen to have some really good olive oil from Italy. Very top quality extra virgin. Yeah. Oh, lucky for me, I didn't turn the right burner on. Okay. Well, I'll let that wait because I don't want to put a, uh, yeah, I don't want to put a, uh, a bit of oil on a pan until it's nice and warm. Yeah, I know nightshade's full of cyanide, I know. You know, the green peppers were a great deal too for a dollar down in Mexico. They get less radiation in Mexico in case you didn't know. Yeah, we, we're up here in the north. We get more. California is getting slammed with radiation from Fukushima. 
So those green peppers are less radiated than stuff you'd get from uh, God knows where. Chernobyl. We use tomato sauce. I could use gravy, but you could go in a gravy direction and make kind of a an Alfredo sauce. Oh, it's called extra virgin because virgins in Italy uh, are actually the ones picking the olives. That's pretty intense. Yeah. Were there 72 virgins picking? If you had 72 virgin olive oil, you'd probably sell to the Muslim market. They would probably love it. Yeah, just called 72 virgin olive oil. You heard about the, uh, the olive oil scam, didn't you? There's a scam going on, apparently in China, all these food scams go on. Uh, they've got, uh, well, actually, I think it's Italy. Italy, there's a, like a mafia group that is taking canola oil and packaging it as olive oil. Yeah, it's not China. We can, we don't blame China on this one. I know, coconut oil is not that healthy. I don't trust it. We have some. It lasts forever in the jar. I'll use it if I have to. You know, if it comes down to the, you know, final days on earth, I'll use it. But Sarah, Sarah says she can make some sort of a deodorant with a coconut oil. And I, I, I don't even want to know how she does that. Yeah, she said her sister is going to show her how. I'm not going to use it. Your papa is a mafioso. Uh, no, I don't know the need of the mafia stuff. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, so we're getting our pan now on, on level three back here. I am going to put a little oil on that pan. About three tablespoons max. All right, there's going to be some oil in this 85% lean meat too, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, I'm going to throw those uh, onions right in there, right off the breadboard. I kind of like cooking with a breadboard. I like smaller breadboards. I just bought a smaller breadboard to travel. But let's just put those right on there. Yeah. You get you a soft, and then I can go back to cutting up my vegetables. And while that's in there on, Taking it up to level six, I'm going to add a lot more heat to it now, and I'm going to cover it up. But what I like to do whenever I start an Italian meal is put some Italian seasoning right on top of that food right now. So. I shouldn't have moved the camera here. Here we go. I'm going to shake some on there. No more than about a half a teaspoon. That gets you started. And yeah, and I'm, I took it up to level six. All right, rinsing my hands off a little bit. Ready to go. So I, I cut the ends off of these things just to be on the safe side, but I don't cut a lot of the ends off, you know, just enough to actually not eat the end. But this is pretty messed up. So as you can see, it's, it's got some blemishes in here. So I'm going to cut that off. I don't want to eat that. Celery, like I said earlier, is a natural salt. So you're adding some natural salt to your meal. And again, I'm using organic produce, but you don't have to. Just use whatever you can get. I used to be 100% organic when I was younger, uh, and I, I'm drifting away from it because of all the, the factors involved, like Fukushima radiation. I don't care if you buy organic, you're still getting radiated food, so. I know, they're always the same ingredients, topic one. But I'm showing you how to cook on a daily basis without, you know, spending a lot of money. Celery and onions are very low in cost. So, you can definitely uh, enjoy the, the benefit of cheap vegetables. I might add, uh, Carrots, if this dish was heading in a different direction, but I'm going to go for kind of a spicy sausage taste today. But if you want carrots, you can certainly dice carrots this meal if you're out of other things and other ideas. Olives are an interesting option. They tend to make the dinner saltier, but they are certainly good. Mushrooms are always a standby for spaghetti. All right.
I will put that in the dish now. Notice the uh, almost perfection that I cook with. It's it's kind of a a skill set that you learn, and then you learn how to how to simplify what you do. Uh, no, I don't have high blood pressure, but I have a, a, a thing called salt sensitivity, which can lead to high blood pressure. So when I cook, uh, especially spaghetti sauces, if you cook with all salted ingredients like ragu this, ragu and pasta sauce, you're, you're actually adding a lot of salt. Now the sausage, the kielbasa is going to be salty. The regular sausage meat will not be. Well, Sponheim Squarepants says in 10 years, they're going to be chopping up a human and no one's going to be surprised. You know, that's kind of scary. We're hearing about, like in South Korea, they found a, a container of capsules filled with baby, desiccated baby flesh. And I couldn't believe the story. I ran it a couple times last week on our show and showed you the link, but. Uh, do I have to look at your gamer shirt? Okay. Spicy sausage is going to make this dish really, really tasty. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to save the mushrooms for later. And I have a little garlic I'm going to save for later. But I am going to get these peppers cut up right now. Let's do that. I've already cored the pepper. The most part. Get every little seed out of there. Sarah really does not like seeds at all. So. But yeah, I cored the peppers and uh, yeah, you can take a look at my kitchen a little bit here. I've got a plant over here that it's a really cool, uh, it's called a uh, Medusa capsicum and it grows little peppers on the top and it's just kind of coming back for the year, make it a second trip. Okay, so we're going to start cutting these peppers up. And the thing with peppers, you want to make sure you wash them. You know, I already washed these already, but make sure you wash your peppers because there's a lot of pesticides used in the making of green peppers down in Mexico. Sorry to say. Because they have a lot of bugs that, you know, could, could definitely be uh, predatory and difficult for the farmers to grow peppers. Hey, I'm not a big protagonist of, uh, of chemicals at all. And like I said, I'm, I, I shoot for organic whenever I can, but I'm going to have fairly big pieces, about a quarter inch to a half inch. Let me get a better shot. Yeah, this is kind of a fun, a relaxing thing for me to do. I enjoy cooking. I don't enjoy cooking for people that throw food away. So I don't, I'm not a chef professionally. I see a lot of waste in, the, in our life and I go to restaurants and I see waste all the time. It really upsets me. So, otherwise, I, you know, I'd love to cook all day, but not exactly uh, something I enjoy when I see so much waste in this country. Some people don't have that choice. They've got a family to feed. And they, they say, oh, man, i got to work, you know, whatever. Hey, come back here. You, you are a wild green pepper. Still the peppers in this? Amazing. Now, that, that pan in the back is really getting hot, and uh, I'm getting ready to rotate those onions. And when I put these peppers in, I'm going to also throw in that turkey okay, I'm going to start with the green pepper right now all right here we go put 
bit of steam coming off of that, huh? It really upsets you when people throw out their Migal's cups. You actually ask for their cups, really? <laughs> You're pretty funny, man. You really ought to get your own YouTube show. Expired Food Chef, everybody. All right. Don't talk about politics. You'll get censored. Here we go. Or I'm going to get ready for that turkey, too. Let's prep that turkey. Yeah, I'm going to cover the turkey with uh, a little bit of a uh, seasoning, face down. We'll throw some Italian seasoning on the turkey straight up because there's hardly any flavoring in this turkey. Kind of, kind of a dry rub on one side. Okay. Let's do it. Get a good angle. Here we go. Come back here. You're not allowed to go down in that crevice. Talk to your green pepper, you know? Get friendly with your green pepper. You're taking their lives. Okay. Take that turkey and just go straight down on top of this. Right out of the package. Take a spatula and press into it. I, I see I, I still have kind of a, a little bit of a freeze going on there. So what I'm just gonna do is press it down like that. Kind of adjust it. And cover that up. There we go. And I'm going to rinse this breadboard off because anytime you work with meat, you want to rinse everything off. Drip dry. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm going to put those mushrooms in those... Uh, those other items together at the same time uh, i'll put the, the dice this up nice and tight put it in with mushrooms and some garlic and i'm going to get the water ready for this now i use filtered water out of my reverse osmosis system when i make spaghetti i don't use my ultra filtered water which i drink out of because frankly these filters that i replaced my uh Zero water filter cost me fifteen ninety nine. So. But this is reverse osmosis filtered water. It's got a three stage filter on it, and uh, you can do this in areas that are not in a drought conditions because reverse osmosis actually uses a lot of water. It really does. Yeah, not non GMO. No, Gorilla is non GMO. This particular brand is. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go about that high for the elbow macaroni, right about halfway full. And I'm going to put it right on the stove at, on a big burner, get it going quick on level six. Everything's either level three or level six with me. Sometimes I go down to low and simmer. I don't like to cook with higher levels because I know it wastes energy. Yeah, so there we go. Everything's cooking, looking good in David's kitchen. That's the lowest water pressure I've ever seen. That's coming out of a reverse osmosis water filter, Kiefer. Yes, that's a reverse osmosis water filter, which is nothing uh, short of amazing. It, it has about three gallons inside of a container filled with water and air. And it pushes it out through a little teeny hole. And it has enough pressure in it to push that out at a fairly good clip. Well, the water pressure in the main house varies in my area. We're, we're off of a well system that's not driven with fluoride. Oh, yeah. You travel the world. You ask restaurants for leftovers. Oh, 
they get more for your buck. Yeah, you're using all kinds of techniques to uh, enjoy life and not have to work too hard to save money. Expired food chef, yeah. Cool. That's exactly what I'm doing. Hey, I'm going to cut into this meat too, because remember, I'm making a super meaty sauce. But at first, I'm going to make my. I'm going to make that water extension on my pasta. So I've done this before. I'll show you how I do it. I pop this can open. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to move that uh, meat around just a real quick to make sure nothing's burning yeah that's that's coming along really nice try not to leave the cover off too long okay i'm going to go ahead and open up this little can of concentrated tomato paste and it's naturally low in salt which is kind of nice so if you're looking for a low salt alternative for your tomato sauce this is the way to do it. So just spoon it right out of there into the container. Okay. And then fill it up with some good water. And this is quadruple filtered water. I use a zero water filter, so okay, give it a little spin. You have to do this a couple times and pour all the water right in there. Okay, we'll do that one more time. These zero water filters are about sixteen ninety or seventeen dollars at uh, Walmart. I think they're nineteen for the filter unit. It might be up to twenty four. I don't know. But uh, they're very effective. They get rid of 99% of all total dissolved solids. Okay. And then just two canfuls, and then I use some of the water back at it and just keep going back and forth until I get it all. There we go. This saved about $2 in tomato sauce. These are 33 cents a piece when you buy them in bulk. I've seen them for a quarter. So they're not that expensive at all. Okay, then just start stirring and stirring and stirring. Your heart's content. I'm going to start, uh, while I stir, I'm going to actually cut up some vegetables. So, because I'm ambidextrous, I can do three things at once. I can talk and cut mushrooms and stir at the same time. Isn't that amazing? And read chat, too. That looks really watery, Dave. Yeah, I know. Well, the thing is, it's gonna it's gonna thicken. I'm gonna show you how it thickens. It's it's really concentrated. So those two cans added to one can of the, the concentrated makes for a very nice sauce. Isn't this special? Whoa. All right, we got some mushrooms going in, along with a pepper. That really is working working really well. Everything's coming along just great. I'll rinse this off just to double check here. Thank you. Well, let's be clear. While David's making a very uh, economical move, Bill, uh, Michelle and I have never done that. We live high on the hog, a courtesy of the American taxpayer. Michelle goes to her, uh, her Pilates, and I work out uh, with, uh, well, Whatever. Reggie Love helps me. Let's just say that. Wouldn't that be funny? If he was still dating Reggie Love. Ah, oh, unreal. I can't believe we had him for president for so Oh, many of you were Democrats. You voted for him. I'm sorry. You really thought he was special, didn't you? That homosexual Muslim. I know. You didn't know he was born in Kenya, did you? You didn't believe those birthers. Oh, no. They would never deceive us. Oh, no. They would never lie to us, Dave. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll put the garlic in toward the end. I'm just going to get this in the pan. All right. Wow, look at that. That's like cooking, man. Mushrooms down. 
Top it off with a light pepper. Don't lose anything in between. Okay. All right, now give everything a good mix and, and chop into that ground meat. You want to make sure it's very, very fine. And we're still cooking at level six, mind you. Now what I like to do is add a little hot sauce to this dish. Okay. So it just so happens I have some hot sauce that I need to use. I got this bottle for free, so I'm using it up. Buffalo from Picante. I'm going to go for about three tablespoons in here. All right. And give that a little spin. Okay, nice. Everything looks really good. I mean, really good. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that up at level six. I'm really cooking the meat. And then I'm gonna open this beautiful package of Hillshire Farm Up Natural. No nitrates, art, no artificial ingredients. I really like the fact that companies like this are going in this direction. Yep. Barack Obama admitted that he was sexually attracted to his professor, who visited him twice in the Oval Office without any hidden cameras. So you can t you can answer what you want about anything. I just I don't know about these people. I'm an American. I always rinse the sausage off a little bit. Some of you are getting a little excited right now. Please t try to limit your uh, your activity. Yeah, thanks. And I'm going to cut this up on this little plate so I don't contaminate any surface. I want to make this extra small because remember, it's going into a big dish with lots of pasta. So I'm going to go ahead and close down on this guy like that. There we go. You like that? Okay, here we go. I guess it has a male, uh, the, the sausage has a male pronoun. I, I think in Germany it's der, der, der sausage. It's not D sausage or das sausage. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut these up real quick with my little Cutco knife that I love. Never loses the blade, ever. Never have to sharpen it. Paid $30 for this little guy. Can you imagine me paying $30 for that? I had a friend once who, uh, who who insisted that I buy something from him because he just started working at Cutco. Like, uh, dude, really? Yeah, man, you got to buy something. No, I came all the way out here to, to show you this stuff. You got to buy it, man. Like, seriously, you're trying to sell to your friend? Like, so apparently he wasn't a friend. I couldn't believe it. So I, I, I went and got it for 30 bucks, but I'm kind of glad I did. It's, it'll last me forever. Okay, I am going to go ahead and put these sausages right in on top of this nice cooking meal, okay? Boom. Hold, please. I'm going to turn it down to level three now. Hold that thought. Oh, that, that was just a crank call, you know? We're, we make ourselves available to people and they don't even know what a, a good deal is, you know? That's how sick the society's become. They just let people, good people, ignore good people who want to help the country and then crap all over us by spamming and stalking us. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Couldn't get much weirder than that. Okay, we're still uh, doing a lot of things here. This is not a, a slow-mo day. This is like, you got to keep going here. Keep mixing and you'll notice you're going to get rid of the lumpies in here. I use my new Cuisinart stirring system, but this is so easy. I'm just going to do it hand manually. And I'm coming up to a boil on the Barilla. All right. 
Okay, introducing my visionware from 1978. Isn't this amazing? This stuff is phenomenal. This was that came out by the Cor Corel company. Corningware, I think it makes it. Really nice stuff. Table, uh, it's actually good for a, a, a glass top stove too. So I'm gonna put this on. That front burner on low. I guess it was going to heat it up after all. That's still cooking over here. Okay. We're almost there. I'm going to prep some garlic. I'm going to go and push all that sausage down into the dish. Okay. Yeah, just push it right in and kind of press it all the way to the bottom. Now, this sausage kielbasa is pre-cooked. Turkey kielbasa. You can rotate it and move around, you know, that kind of thing. Kind of kind of flex the whole dish around. Mostly meat and pepper right now. Hardly any sauce still. Covering it right up. Then I'm gonna put this the sauce I just mixed in right on top. Now this is a very neutral uh, dish at this point. There's not a lot of heavy spices except for that sausage. And that's the way I like it. I'm gonna cover it all up with that tomato sauce and keep it at level three. I'm gonna take and add a little bit more water to this and get every last drop of this if I can. Or, or, or close to it, you know. Okay, we got a full boil on the Brilla. Add that to the top. Nice. We're ready to go ahead with the pasta shell. So I'm going ahead and putting it in there. You can see it back here. This is warming at level three right here. That's at level six back here, and that's at level three in the back. So we're going to go ahead and put this pasta shells in here. Just throw the whole box in, straight up. Oh, but before you do that, Add a little salt to the water. It helps with the pasta shells and the tasting. No more than a couple shakes of the salt shaker. Oh, and then just pour it right in there. Okay. And take a wooden spatula and mix it up right away. Keep it at level six. You want a hard boil going. All right. Nice. I'm going to kind of leave the cover slightly ajar so it doesn't overheat. And I'm going to kind of talk to Chad here and, and prep my uh, garlic. Okay. Thank you. Mix your salt properly. You know, some people are using this really good salt. I haven't even opened up a container. Yeah. Mix your salt properly. I always remember. Okay. Well, I have a... Uh, an amazing container of Himalayan salt that I haven't even opened yet. And I, I think I really should start using it. I've been using the uh, sea salt, you know. You've got proof. Okay, Soviet Spy, are you getting ready to leave the show again? You're a woman? You're a dude. Okay. America Can Radio. Oh, you're a T. Rucker fan? Oh, yeah, okay. What is the proof of exactly, Scissor 5? We're dealing with a, a chat issue here. You're going to be bouncing. Okay, take care, Ben. Enjoy your, uh, your garbage uh, experience or wherever you, you get your food. I don't dumpster dive, so. Okay, I'll be back in, in about 15 minutes into the show, so. Okay, take care. We'll see you in a bit. So you're a woman. Why do you put a transgender picture on your on your uh, Twitter account there, Sylvia Spy? I mean, that's clearly a dude, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you look like a dude? 
I, I didn't mean to imply that you would look like a dude. Well, I guess I did. Well, I mean, what are we, we're, we're not really sure what's going on here. Soviet's a dude, really? Oh, man. I can't believe this. This is really disappointing. Here we thought you were coming, you were telling people you were a woman. And... How come you have a female voice? Because you called me with a female voice. How do you do that? You have one of those voice synthesizers, high tech. Okay, we're ready to go. Uh, we're going to stir that pasta again. I'm over here stirring the pasta. Yeah, hard boil, everybody. Level six. Some people put Italian seasoning in the water. Want to try that? Might be good. All right, let's get back to cooking, shall we? Whoa, hey, that sounds good. Infuse that Italian taste of the pasta. I'm going to put a little oil down in this container here. Spray the atomizer on there. Okay, just I'm heating up this at level three at the front here. Okay, we're done. This is when it gets kind of crazy. We're cooking on all fours toward the end of our shift. I'm gonna throw some uh, garlic in there on the meat sauce. I'm put a, putting it at the bottom of this uh, this dish, minced. So. To mince up this garlic and put it at the base of this dish because the garlic will go up through the dish as it slowly cooks on the stove. All right. I almost feel like I want more garlic in there. I've got a few minutes I can do that. So I love the smell of garlic and spaghetti and. That pasta is about a 10 minute cook, so it's already five minutes into it. Oh, yeah, these got to be eaten. They're ready to plant. Wow. Yeah, these have been, see the, the garlic is growing, ready to plant. I'm going to throw a couple of them in the garden. Yeah, I'm planting garlic all around my house. If you uh, use it as a a deterrent for ants it really works living garlic keeps ants away carpenter ants specifically they can't stand the living garlic there's something about it uh, no one really knows why hey, this glass top is starting to get pretty hot next to me i'm going to turn the water completely off over here i'm going to cover it right up in the back make sure it doesn't foam over but it's one way to cook with less heat if you are making something like pasta. Once that water reaches a full boil, you can let it sit for a little while toward the end of its cooking cycle. Yeah, just a little trick. If you're saving energy, good idea. Because that, that pan is hot and that will cook in its own heat. There we go. It's already overflowing a little bit. Give it another spin. Make sure it doesn't stick. Cover it up. Leave a little room for air, otherwise it does foam over. But when it's reached that temperature where you turn it off, it actually works really well. Yeah, now that's the amount of garlic I want to put in the bottom of it. I was kind of looking like there was a little skimpy garlic going on here. I'm just going to go ahead and dice these up with this little petco knife. And we should be good to go. Yeah, I'm putting it at the bottom because the heat from the bottom will send the, the thing through the... Uh, entire dish and it will flavor the entire dish as it sits. Heat rises and the garlic smell goes with it. The garlic taste and all the goodness in it. All right, so we're going to put that at the bottom of this. Yeah. 
Ready to go. Okay, I'm going to put all of that that we have cooking over here. See that? I'm now going to expand my dish out. And I'm putting this whole thing in the glass top. Inverting everything onto the glass top. Every little bit. And I like to put a little water in there just to make sure it cools off and doesn't stick. So leave it on the stove back there. You don't want to get a sticky stainless steel. It's pretty bad. Okay. The minimal uh, movement on the bottom. I'm just letting that cook up through it. We're still cooking over in, our, in the heat on the other one. I'm dropping everything down to low. The back burner is off. But just the only thing that will be on is this one low setting. That's it. Hey, cool. You want to plant Egyptian onions? Ooh, sounds good. I know there's no such thing as too much garlic. Somebody accused me of putting too much garlic in the sh in because I had this chopped garlic in a container. And they said, oh, my gosh, you put like three tablespoons of that in there. You're overcooking. Hey, take care, expired shoot food chef. Yeah. Yeah. Save money and eat expired. Yeah. It's especially good with, uh, with Angus meat. Like if you get a piece of meat that's sitting around for two weeks, that's as good as Angus meat. That's what Angus meat is. So. All right, we're almost set. That's cooking really well on low right now. I'm going to add that, uh, the other ingredients. I have this one. I'm expanding out the sauce considerably. Add this entire container of diced petite tomatoes. Get everything in there. A little bit more. And because I have to eat this uh, tomato so uh, soup up, I'm going to put the tomato soup in there. I'm going to see how it looks first. Smells good. Yep, got some milk, so some uh, tomato solids in it. All right. Now I'm going to take this entire thing up to a level six again in the front. Okay, pressing everything in. Bringing the heat up at this point is essential. And melding the ingredients that whatever you have in your tomato sauces are all going into this right now. And melding. Okay. Nice. Okay. I've got a container I, I frequently cover this with. Okay, that's going up to level six in the front. I'm going to simmer it for about three minutes, and then I'm going to add the pasta and then turn everything down to a warm. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be a big meal. Hey, this is a shirt I wear for the show. It's easier. Otherwise, I have to show another, put another shirt on. David, what made you want to do a food broadcast? Uh, I have to prepare foods for, uh, you know, the week. And I thought, well, why not take and double my time and use it effectively? Video shows Stephen Paddock interacting with Mandalay Bay employees. That's nice. We still need him to show his weapons going into the room. Interacting with Mandalay Bay employees, but that's a start. Thanks, Poison Pez. I need to see his weapons being carried by him into the room. Yeah, where's the video footage of that? Yeah, thanks for uh, coming to our uh, our low cost cooking show, everybody. <sighs> Large amounts of luggage. Yeah, right. Well, that's still not good enough. I don't buy it. I want to see him carrying it into the room. But I'll take a look at it. 
This guy on the video got his house raided for growing food. They stalked him. Wow. Egyptian onions. Okay. All right. I'll check that in a little bit later. They told him to shut down his growing operation, growing food. <laughs> That's unreal. They thought he was growing weed and growing Egyptian onions. Thanks, Tsunami. All right. So we're almost done here. We're just going to give everything a kind of a, a stir. Yeah, everything's kind of getting hot again. It's amazing how heat, how things kind of move. And now I'm moving the garlic now. The garlic is now mixing throughout the entire dish. It just stayed on the bottom for a little while. This is the kind of sauce you can let, let simmer for a long time. And if you, if you want, you can serve this entire dish separately. I would recommend serving it separately uh, at the table and maybe parmesaning the uh, and putting a little oil on the pasta shells. Yeah. Okay, the pasta is ready and I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. So, notice how it takes all the water. Almost all the water is completely sucked right into the pasta shell. Okay. Wow, look at that. Right down to the last one. And I got it. The last one. Now take the entire thing and put it separately in another dish or do it like I'm doing and add it right to the dish itself. And then start rotating everything. Kind of lift it from the bottom and go to the top and turn your, your burner down to, to low or simmer. Wow, there's a lot of meat in here and a lot of vegetables, peppers. It's going to be great. Look at that. Wow. I can practically turn it off, garnish it with a little Parmesan, and I'm good to go. Look at that. Wow. I am impressed. Okay, I'm going to cover it with some Parmesan. And I'm saying good night to it. I will be coming back to this dish later. Thank you, everybody, for watching this uh, recorded broadcast, if you're watching it recorded. Yeah, isn't that cool? An entire dish will feed 10 people easily. In fact, it's still hot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it sit and just kind of gel, work with its own taste. Yeah, entire family meal, 10 people, 7 bucks. I put the kielbasa in. You missed it. Yeah, that went in That went in right at the, uh, when that meat was cooking. Yeah. Hey, we'll see you over at the other show in about a minute. I'll talk to you then. Thank you for watching. See you in a bit.